move towards our next session, which is on the topic driving financial business risk with cyber risk quantification. And for this, I would like to invite on stage Mr. Sudhir Balakeshwan, who is country sales head at Safe Security. Giving a brief introduction, Mr. Sudhir is the country business director India for Safe Security, a leading cyber risk quantification and management platform provider. With over 20 plus years of experience in the field of information technology and software, Sudhir has overseen multiple large scale projects of business optimization and expansions and has introduced strategically designed technical solutions helping cybersecurity at its core. With this, please welcome Mr. Sudhir with a huge round of applause. How many of you thought with the climate of Bangalore what we have today, whether to come here or not? Can I have a raise of hands? Wow, I have some at least 10 people who are raising hands. Good. So your time will be well spent today. Before they set it up, quick introduction of mine. I'm Sudhir Balakeshwan. I lead the sales for Safe India. And with me, Mr. Rahul is there. He's our co-founder uh, who is also uh, here. So before I start, So either you can watch this one minute video, skip 19 minutes, or skip one minute and watch 19 minutes with me. Cybersecurity is at a tipping point. Attacks are more frequent and more complex, and financial losses are rocketing. The current cyber risk management approach is fundamentally broken. CISOs require a more efficient solution that helps them to visualize cyber risk as breach likelihood and percentage and its business impact in dollars. Prioritize their security initiatives, budget, and cyber insurance coverage based on the threat landscape and risk scenarios that may impact their business. Communicate consistently and align all stakeholders across the organization. But how can all this happen on a single platform. Introducing Safe. So I just want to start with the context. There are some four giveaways which I will give to the participants uh, who answer relatively simpler questions, right? So if you see the slide here, so Dr. Einstein was taking a session to his physics students. And he was setting up a question paper which was similar to last year's, that is one year back, right? Now his assistant asked, why did you do this? Can somebody guess what's the answer? Yeah, sorry, I have only one. I think you both should decide which one. <laughs> Great. Questions are same, but answers are changed. The reason why I give this context is, excuse me. Bigger. Can you pick up the goodie too? Can I have your name, please? She is from? Vodafone. So while the questions are same, answers are different. The reason why we say this, Mr. Sudhish spoke about qualitative risk assessment in the previous session. Okay. Now, there are different metrics to manage a risk, but the attack surface is changing. Right? So the path to any risk management is quantification. Okay. So with that context, we just want to tell you our mission is to become the de facto industry standard to manage, mitigate, and measure cyber risk. Now brief about us, uh, we are headquartered in Palo Alto, California. We have a global team of 200 members. We have got $51 million in the last round of funding led by British Telecom, John Chambers, and MSAD Ventures. We have been categorized under risk quantification and management. The algorithm has been jointly developed with MIT US. Right? Now, I just want to ask you next question for the next goodie. You got the goodies? Yeah, thank you. So, which is the number one man-made concern in the boardrooms across the globe? Yeah, please go ahead. No. Yeah, you raise your hand. Can I have some mic there, please? I think you can. Go 
Generally, what is the number one man-made concern in the boardroom? Yes, please go ahead. Return on investment. Man behind you. Yes, perfect. Bang on. Why is it not coming properly? It's blinking. I thought it was blinking here. So it was blinking there also. Sorry, I didn't know that. Yes, can I have a name, please? Manjunath from Infosys. Great. So don't ring a bill bell on the time, please. But I will not take more than 20 minutes. This is my commitment. But still, it is blinking. Yes, cyber security is the number one concern in the boardroom. Your laptop, you can put it. No, no, but the content has changed. Put it your laptop. Yeah, so I will continue without the slides, but slides are important, right? Otherwise, but how come it is not working? Okay. Yeah, I think it is blinking here, but fortunately not blinking there. Okay. Yeah, so the most companies have multiple cyber security products, right? So with respect to cloud, this have in their hybrid environment, right? So a lot of cyber security tools, a lot of dashboards, and in fact, a lot of scores. Every cyber security product have their own measurement of risk. And what the, what's that company is missing in this aspect? One is the real-time visibility of breach likelihood. Now, that's what I spoke about quantification. So you may have the best of vulnerability tools, you will have best of EDR platform, you will have best of your mailing solutions or your cloud platform. How are you ensuring you have complete visibility of your breach, which is probably are going to happen in the next one, three, six, or nine months, right? The second important thing is a single view of your risk, which is on the workforce side, which is employee, second from a process side, third from a technology side. How are you merging all these pillars into your single pane of glass from a visibility perspective, right? Now, next comes the next goody question to you guys. What are the key objectives of cyber security investment? Raise your hand, please. Yes. Please raise your hand and then answer. I will only have one goodie to give. No. Okay. I'm waiting for a word. Yes, Madam on the last. Yes, please. Please, please, let me hear her. Yes, please. Cyber threats. I'm waiting for a word which you would have been shattered by every OEM who is selling you guys. Yes, I give it. Breach. In the last 24 months, Every five minutes, you would have got a call. I will avoid breach. Can I have your name, madam? Thank you, nice name. So, you all buy cyber security products with one motive in mind. Go to CFO, Mera, one portion of breach I can reduce. Then you go again, second portion of breach I will reduce, right? Irrespective of that, nobody is sure whether you get breached or not. This ensures you minimize 
your financial, regulatory and reputational risk. Right? Now, this is the problem statement which we solve as safe. So, I spoke about siloed environments across your cyber security landscape. All are siloed. Second, most of your products are reactive in nature. Right? While some of you think that I have my SIM online SOC, these are all tools which looks at the logs giving you prioritization of events, right? So we are a prescriptive and a predictive solution on the breach side. Third important aspects, none of the cybersecurity tools talk the language of business. Do you agree, disagree? There is no goodie on this place, <laughs> okay? So what we do, we are completely the API platform. So let's say you have the best of EDR, best of vulnerability solution, best of multi-cloud solutions, right? We integrate through API. It's an online integration, which is highest read-only access. Second, we give you risk prioritization. So across all these signals. Third, we give you an objective score with a residual dollar risk you are sitting on or an Indian rupee risk, right? What is the financial risk you are sitting on taking all these inputs into our platform? Now, this is a pictorial representation of what we do. So we normally take the business context. So basically business context is your geography, which industry you have, what is the criticality of your infrastructure which you are giving me inputs. Then we take all your internal gaps. There are only some OEMs which is mentioned, but there's a wide range which is expanding as we move on, right? So we take signals, then we have our independent threat intel uh, feed which goes into our platform. Our platform is built on Bayesian theorem. So we all would have read in our graduation, right? Bayes theorem. So what is the likelihood of a breach? Okay, so from a cyber standpoint, we give you that. Second, coming, we cover Monte Carlo simulation, basically giving you an impact of that breach. So that impact will decide what is the financial loss you as an organization will have, right? So this is in our algorithm. We have got some 40,000 cyber insurance data in our algorithm, plus we have got 5,400 attacks and techniques, which is embedded. So any gap which comes out of any of your platform is mapped to this. Second, we are all controls are mapped to ATT and CK MITRE, right? So you know, ATT and, my, ATT and CK MITRE is the source of truth for any kill chain which has happened across the globe till date. So we map to that. Then we give you an output which is on the risk, financial risk modeling perspective, group visibility, your different business units. Third, you get different scenarios on the attack side, right? So there are different uh, scenarios. So Rahul, can you open the space for demo instance quickly? You don't have internet connection, okay, leave. Oh, okay. So, so I thought I will show you my online platform also. Basically, in our platform, we have 14 risk scenarios. You can create your own risk scenario. Let's take an example. You want to understand, based on Uber data breach, what is your risk? So you can create your own scenario and get a percentage of what is the likelihood of an attack with respect to this. Because any attack, a known attack in the industry, your CFO or your CEO will, CEO will call you and ask you, where are we with respect to this kill chain? Okay, so you have a real-time quantified view of your risk. Okay. It's okay, no problem. I've moved on. <laughs> okay, so basically, I want to show you my platform for two minutes and then give you, right? So I ask the first question, what is the number one concern which Boardroom talks about, right? The reason why we build this uh, output from a platform is a lot of customers came back and said, can, can I have a real-time view of risk from a board perspective? Because if, if a customer who is in your industry gets breached, immediately your, one of your board members will surely wake up and call up the CEO or CFO and say, where are we with respect to this, right? So this is a sample board report which comes out of our platform based on the inputs what you gave. So let's say you have an expected loss of $120 million. Your industry average runs at 90 to $100 million. So on the right-hand side is basically the score what you have. That's a corresponding loss perspective. So there are three attack types which we have covered. These are the three terminologies which we have seen board members knowing it, right? So they don't go into your DDoS or your uh, phishing attack, right? They normally know ransomware, your data breach, 
or your business email compromise. So we give thread pair of each of these scores versus what is the potential financial impact, right? And then any risk management has got three things which you as a risk leader you need to do. One is mitigate, transfer and accept residual risk. How many of you uh, talk to the board on the cyber risk side? How easy is the conversation sir? Very easy. How do you say that? Perfect. So this is the maturity which we are seeing. Lot of board is coming into. So I think uh, Mr. Sudesh spoke about SEC guidelines, right? So in US and in Europe, these guidelines are coming in. India slowly it will fall in place, wherein you need to give an objective view of your risk, right? Rather than looking at some of the incidents or an attack which happened, right? So the next is based on the mitigation plan of the input of signals what you're given. We will give you what is your prioritized actionable insights, right? So somebody, so in the last session, I think uh, a gentleman from Philips asked, right? Why do you think that budgets are shrinking on the cyber security side? So there's an answer to this. So we give you what is the return on security investment? So these are your prioritized output which comes out of a platform. We will give you what spent and what is the risk level from a financial terms you reduce. So if you see the last last but one column, financial risk reduction. So if you look at, if you mitigate these controls, I know it is not visible clearly. If you mitigate these controls, what is the risk you are reducing? So your discussion with your board or to your CFO becomes clear objective saying, I am spending $100,000, I will reduce the risk of $1 million from an organization perspective, right? So once you do this mitigation, your 120 million, which I showed you in the previous slide, reduces the risk from 120 to 80 million. Right? And obviously most of you would have cyber insurance in place. So you need to figure in, key in the cyber insurance value. The next is the residual risk. Okay, till date, most of the organizations, the board reporting was subjective, looking at what is my uh, risk from a high, medium, low perspective or from an attack surface perspective. Here we clearly give you defined values of what is that accepted residual risk. So your 40 million was a mitigation, your cyber insurance was 30 million. Your accepted residual risk is 50 million. There are instances where board can say this 50 million is the higher side. So why don't you look at reducing it? Only there are two things which you can do. Either increase your cyber insurance or look at more mitigation techniques, right? 99%, none of the cyber insurance vendors give you higher uh, increase in the coverage. So you are left with less option in terms of mitigation. So you go to your CFO and say, I give me more budget, I will increase my 40 million mitigation to probably 45 million. I will reduce risk by 3 million, right? So basically, that's the discussion which you have from a qualitative perspective. So this is the last uh, goodie which I want to give you. So can somebody guess what are the three pillars which I'm going to talk about? What are safe delivered? There are three words I'm looking at. So I, I picked up all these three words in my last 15 minutes. Yes, please go ahead. Anybody else? Yes. Okay, go, got it. Uh, there's a synonym to that. I will connect it. Next two. Yes, please let me give him a chance because he's picked up one. You want me to move? Yeah, I'll be in the center. You're reading the content and giving the answer? There are answers in the slide itself. Who said that? You? Yeah, go ahead. Go to the third one. He knows if he doesn't say also, he will get it. Somebody wants to try the third one? Communicate. Who said communicate? Okay, get it. So it is quantification, visibility, communication, right? How do you quantify your risk which is understood, measurable from a cyber side? Can I have your name, please? Jagannath from Marlas. Good, nice. Okay. Uh, second is visibility. What is the visibility on the cyber side? Second, communication across. 
the biggest problem which you have seen on the cyber side is the communication between an L1 SOC engineer to your board. When you look at a platform like SAFE, you will know an L1 engineer mitigating a control will know what is the risk reduction he's having. Okay? Now, these are a few things which uh, hap has happened in the last three, four months. How many of you have read IBM data breach report? Okay, so I don't have a goodie, but I'll give you one. Tell me, what does it talk about? No, I'm only talking about from a cost of data breach reduction. If you see, there's a slide on the 23rd page. Okay? Right. Can you pick up this? Because I just showed the half. The half is pending to be shown. Uh, I think almost about uh, 75 to 80 percent reduction if you are able to prevent. At least a 4.32 million dollar breach. You can save over 3.9 million dollars. So roughly, that's what you can save if that's the question that you're asking. Okay, now I'm looking at some percentage. Yes, please go ahead. If you can give it to my context, great. So you're basically asking the cost of data breach. Is that the question? My question is, this is, this is a slide which is there in the 30, 40 page of IBM data breach, right? And this is picked up by most of the security leaders. Right. So in the next one, there's a pure bifurcation, what are the areas which a CISO or a security leader should focus on? So do you want me to uh, speak out all the areas and their, uh, by what factor it reduces the, uh, reduces the impact yeah, of the data breach? Is that correct. what you're referring to? Yes. The page number 17? Okay, yeah. got it. Sounds good. So I, I think essentially it talks about around seven to eight areas which have got a, which if you invest in those specific areas, by what dollar value it reduces the impact, uh, sorry, sorry, by what factor it reduces the impact of breach in terms of dollar value. Like say for example, I'll just speak about a couple of them. One is effective incident response planning, DevS investment in DevSecOps, board oversight. Um, these are just three or four areas which oh, come no to problem. Problem. And I then if at all, yeah, the, the, the ones which have, which increase the impact, like say for example, the average cost of data breach given in the report is around 4.17 million ballpark is what I remember. That is for a classical ecosystem. But if at all, it's a permanent remote workforce that's there. That adds an additional, I think, 1.25 million, or I would say, I would say around, yeah, approximately around 100 odd, around one, around 100K or 150K is what it adds to the cost of cost of data breach. So essentially, if the cost of data breach is 4.17 is an average cost, if at all you have a remote workforce, you add another, I think, uh, uh, 100 to 200K. Yes, to it. I got it. Can I have a name, please? Suhail. Sumit. Suhail Khan. Suhail Khan from? Yeah. Uh, Charge V Technologies. So, so this is the slide which I have picked up from the same one. So he spoke perfectly right. What is the percentage reduction of cost of data breach, right? So the first thing is security AI and automation, right? While well, I know everybody runs behind some of the fancy uh, terminologies on the EDR side, HCR side, zero trust, which has got nine products in place, right? Clearly, security AI and automation covers 65%. Now. Sohail spoke about incident response. So you reduce your breach by 58%. And we were fortunate to see, any surprise to see, the risk quantification is at 48%. And another surprising factor is your zero trust and XTR both put together covering only 30% of your cost reduction. Okay? On the same lines, uh, research analysts have said about risk quantification getting adopted in the next 12 to 18 months. And what is the percentage of adoption, whether it is Gartner, whether it is Deloitte, Forrester, or IBM speak to that, okay? I come to the back end of the presentation. If you have any questions, I'm around. Yes, please go ahead. The accepted risk, right, and quantified with the $50 million. So how you actually do that? Okay, so you're getting into the uh, nuts and bolts of our algorithm. Uh, they, they just want to understand because that was a bit curious because uh, so I'm part of quickly I'll tell you uh, we have Bayesian theorem in our algorithm and Monte Carlo simulation. So there are two things. On top of this, we have got forty thousand cyber insurance claims taking out the metadata of the organization on what context does got breached, right? So 
All these are there in our algorithm. It has been jointly developed with MIT in Boston, US, where it's a research which we yearly work with cybersecurity team of MIT to look at what is the likelihood of a breach which is happening. So if you look at Bayes' theorem, right, what is the probability of an event A versus an event B versus an event C occurring? Okay. It will be specific to organization. So let's say, uh, let's assume uh, you have your three VA tools. I take all inputs of three. You have two EDR tools. I take all. You have multi-cloud. There are few organizations who don't have a VA. So they do point in time. So I take a manual input. So there, are, there are ways and means of taking that inputs. It's only that how many inputs you give me. So I have a confidence metric in my platform also. Okay. Yes, please. Anybody else? Yes. Can I have a name, please? So I think uh, this is a normal question which I get it 99% of the time, right? So uh, SIM is a reactive tool. How many of you disagree with this? Yeah, I kind of agree. I agree with that. Okay. Why I say it's a reactive tool is it takes logs from all your infrastructure, right? So basically it's a, you have connectors built, whether it's IBM or QRadar or an offsite or Securonics or the Splunk, right? It takes logs, puts it in their algorithm, tells you what is your P1, P2, P3, so that a SOC engineer can do a, do a remediation. Now what we are saying is we are an API platform, we are SIM minus one, so we give you a proactive likelihood of whether this gap can be breached by an attacker or not. So if you look at the MITRE shield chain, okay, let's take a ransomware as an example, there are 134 techniques. Now, I mentioned there are different attack scenarios which we give you, right? When you go to ransomware as, well, I couldn't show you the demo. If you go to the ransomware uh, technique, it will tell you out of the 134, how many of you are qualified or not, or how many of you are failing it. The reason why we give it is, it will tell you whether an attacker can execute an attack in your organization or not. Because if you are looking at your exfiltration stage as your primary protection window, and if you keep your reconnaissance uh, stage open, there's no point that you will not get attacked. You may have best of the areas. They will also take time to look at the pattern and uh, stop it, right? So basically the reason I ask this question because we have developed a, a business intelligence solution on top of this. So do you think for our clients, we could you know, think of working with SAFE to you know, move up to that next level? Yes, so this is a maturity matrix uh, on the risk quantification side. I think a lot of customers ask me, who is your biggest competition? Can somebody guess? AWS? Surprising, we integrate with AWS. Any guesses? Yeah, I have my competition myself. Excel sheets are our biggest competition. You have your own metrics. I have, I have heard some CISO saying, I have been here for 19 years. I have built this platform, which is purely quantifying my risk. I said, how? With my Excel. How many member team? Me and one more team. I said, tomorrow if you leave, what do you do? That organization has to take care of it. This is between four walls, right? Any, any other questions uh, from anyone else? Okay, but still, if you have any questions, we have their booth at the Vijayanagar Hall. Please do visit and have your queries answered. Thank With you this, very much. Thank you so much, Sudhir, once thank again. You.